Welcome to the February 9th, 2023 meeting of the Environmental Facilities Corporation Finance Committee. Um, I'm secretary to the corporation and I'm going to call roll. Do we have Mr. Corcoran is absent? Director DeMarkey? Here. Director Krasansky? Here. And Director Zorowski? I'm here. First, we have a quorum of the committee. Our first order of business as Chair Corcoran is absent is appointment of a chair pro tem for the purposes of this meeting. It's my understanding that Director Krasansky is willing to serve in this role. Uh, can I have a motion and a second um, for appointment of Director Krasansky as chair pro tem? So moved. Second. Wonderful. Any discussion? Grateful. All right. Is everyone in agreement? Aye. We have Aye. unanimous approval. It is now your meeting, Chair Krasans. Thank you. So a uh, call for approval of the draft minutes from the August 31st, 2022 Finance Committee meeting. Um, does anybody have, you know, somebody want to make a motion for approval of those minutes? I'll make a motion for approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Wait, second. I wasn't there, so I think you have to second it, Charlie. I'll second it. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Adam. Uh, I'll second it. Uh, any any changes? Any discussion? Is there anything to, you know we should alter before we approve it? I see nothing. So, all in favor of uh, approving the minutes? Aye. Uh, Adam abstains. I'll abstain. I'm for it, and so is Vita. Great. Approve those. Thank you. <laughs> um, we have a uh, presentation and a discussion of the state revolving funds debt authorization request, clean water and drinking water, state revolving funds refunding bonds series 2023A formal resolution, ID number one on the on the regular committee meeting. Uh, Brian McClintock is going to present and then we can we can uh, ask him questions after a, uh, after a presentation. Brian. Thank you. Um, as laid out in the memo that was, was circulated, uh, we're looking for uh, authorization for two hundred and five million dollars uh, worth of worth of bonds to refund uh, three series of EFC bonds, uh, series two thousand and twelve B, two thousand and twelve E, and series two thousand and thirteen B. Um, twelve B and twelve E were were part of the resolution that we brought in September, um, but they were pulled because the uh, the market did not support that refunding at the time. Um, there are uh, I uh, let's see. There's 93 recipients um, on both sides, clean water and drinking water, and that's 146 projects. Um, there's 129 drinking water or clean water projects in in 17 drinking water projects. Um, the the subsidy levels will be 50 percent for the clean water side. There are there are three projects in there or four projects that are very old New York water projects that are still at one third, believe it or not, mm -hmm. which was the date, I think it was 1993 that they could, that they started prior to 93. Um, the drinking water projects are at, at, uh, at one third also. Um, so this resolution that we're asked, we're seeking here is a full flex resolution. We have put it in for 205 million. Um, the actual, uh, if, if we hold out the way we're, we're, the markets are holding right now, the par amount of the bonds will be lower, somewhere around 170 million. We need about 180 million dollars worth of uh, worth of proceeds on it, um, but this allows us to do direct financings if if we have to remove uh, so certain projects from it. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, we have a we have an estimated savings of about 17.3 million dollars. Um, those numbers are were run about two weeks ago. Um, the market has changed a little bit on us. Um, the market has gotten, it got better and then worse. <laughs> so we're actually, uh, even though the market in the past week has, has gotten worse for us, our savings are, are estimated right now at about $18 million, a little bit higher. Um, I also did a, a uh, sensitivity analysis on this. Um, we do have, uh, you know, a couple of months before we're going to price this, and we have at least one Fed meeting on that. So I ran the numbers at, at uh, um, 25 basis points higher um, than what they are currently, 
and we're still producing about 14.9 million on that. Um, we took it a step further and ran them at 50 basis points higher, and that brings us down to about 11.9 million. In, in each case, actually at the 50 basis point, um, our 2012 E drops below 3%, but in all the other ones, the, the, the percentage savings is over, th over the 3% threshold that we usually look at. Um, I would, you know, if it goes up that high, we'd have to make a decision at the time. Um, but because these are an amortizing asset, we're, they're paying principal every year, there's going to be less and less savings every year. So, you know, if we're going to be doing it on the other series, we might consider uh, keeping it in, even though it's under um, a, a certain threshold, as long as it's not negative. So um, we have some certain municip municipalities that we're looking at um, not putting in the refunding and keeping them uh, unrefunded because there's no savings for them. Um, and it just makes it easier for that. Um, I, in, and I, I mentioned that uh, the uh, 12 A's and B and E's went to the board back in September. And since I went back and looked at the rates, the rates are 30 basis points better right now. That's what makes it more uh, advantageous to do these, uh, to do the refunding with, with them. So um, the, because it's only refunding, the uh, the breakdown of of uh, of the participants and the thresholds for for um, the ratings will not have, will won't have changed. Um, what you know that'll change in in December when we do the next pool. But right it, now, it again, because it's refunding only, it's what we're, we're our our percentages of AAA, double A, and all that are, are basically saying the same. Got yes. it. Yes. So, Let me ask about that if I could. So I see a. I think I've read that local governments uh, have not been as healthy uh, as they are right now mm -hmm. for a long time, just a number of reasons, you know, federal uh, money and sales taxes, things like that are still strong and federal money. And I'm wondering, again, I see all the non-rated, yep. you know, and I'm wondering if some of the, if, if you urge communities to, if, again, you know, those that are not rated, whose choice is that? Does the choice change as maybe some of them are healthier than they have been? Maybe they, maybe some of them are starting to ask for ratings or they still are not interested to small. Just give me a sense of, of why all the small, a lot of small ones not rated. It's um, workload. Yeah. And um, cost, right? It, it, workload, cost. workload, cost, and some of these smaller ones are just issuing to us. Right. So they don't need to get the rating. Um, but I think that that's the, the 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 big thing is is workload cost and and, and the not need for it. And since the overall risk is seemingly lower, right? Then yes. then there's not so much you know need for it. Is that yeah general? Yeah. And that's yeah. another value added of EFC, right. which right. is you know you come in the door here, you don't have not to rated. go through that. Um, Still get so. the triple A. Some yeah. some of the, some of the smaller communities, you know, this is the biggest project that they'll they'll do um, if they need to get, you know, new trucks or something like that, yeah. they just go to their local bank. So they don't, they don't need yeah. to get the rate. I just wanted to go back if I could to the um, rate issue. I think most people obviously aren't anticipating a 50 bit raise or hoping it won't be a 50 bit price. Right. But you, you said, obviously you had to reevaluate. You guys have in place where you given thought to what that process might look like, what might tip it one way or another. I'm, I'm not suggesting you should commit to it now, but just to, if we get to that fork in the road, it, be curious as to what you're thinking is as to how you might decide one way or another. Well, you know, typically on a current refunding, which these all are, um, we have we've we've had a soft policy at EFC of three percent, right. so anything is is still good to go. Um, you know, as I said, the the 2012 E's uh, drop below just below that. They're still they're about two point five, I think, at at fifty basis points. So um, you might go ahead anyway, because we're doing it already, and there's and there's a cost savings because a lot of our costs are fixed at that point. We we might we might put it in there anyways. Yes. Okay. Yeah. When you say you might, sorry, is that in the dollar amount? It would probably be more in the percentage amount. Yes. Because percentage. The percentage is usually what we look at on that. I'm very sorry to interrupt everyone. I just wanted to note for the record uh, that Director Corcoran appears to have been able to join us. Can you hear us and see us all right? 
I can and apologies. It kept kicking me off and not letting me rejoin. So I don't know if it was on, it was obviously on my end, but apologies, everyone. And I can jump back to the agenda, Kate, whenever you're ready, but uh, I see you've already started a robust discussion here. Yeah, uh, Director uh, Krasansky kindly uh, took the reins as acting chair pro tem. So they have begun the discussion and the reviews, but if you have any questions, updates, items, of course, just let us know. Thank you. So I'm from so the sorry. discussion, just to recap, what I'm hearing is your very analytical approach to looking at our series and deciding who's going to have the cost benefit, who is it, and and how you're watching the market to make your decisions on taking the changes. Correct. Right. As Adam said, we're you know expecting a 50 basis right. point uh, change. I would expect, a, you know, at this point, a 25 base point change in March. So, <clears throat> and this price is two weeks after the Fed meets. Uh, it prices the last week of April. Oh, okay. like so the last week of so so almost a month. Yeah, and, you have a month, right? Yeah, and I think the next Fed change after that is in the end of May. Well, that kind of raises an interesting point because if they go 50 points, I mean, if, if then then maybe the markets may. Who knows? Who knows what will happen in that month? Exactly correct. Yes. If they go 50 base points, it might, it, it, nothing might be on the board because the market is not expecting it. So, yeah, quarter point and then that's it. No more after that. Yeah. So, that's a, is that a promise? Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> no. and, and, you know, once we get settled in that, the other thing is right now with our uh, market is there's a big, credit spread from the benchmark, the MMD benchmark we use. Um, if we're settled, if if the feds are settled with a pause or anything else, we might see that that uh, credit spread uh, tighten up to, to mm -hmm. um, we're about 10 to 15 base points off of our historical spreads right there. So higher. Any other questions about this? Seemingly none. Uh, <laughs> I would, uh, you know, call for a call for approval if anybody wants to uh, make a motion to approve uh, this in the committee to move to the move this to, to the full board agenda. So, so moved. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, so the the uh, we've. Uh, um, recommending to the to the full board this proposed issue must be accepted and approved by the full board you know, upon uh, ID number one in the meeting that starts at 11. Uh, uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I see a second from Francis. Thank you. All in favor of adjourning? Adjourn. Thank you so much. Great. <laughs>